Well, lucky you, you actually ended up buying a 16 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro or M1 Max model. And these are part this is probably the best MacBook you can go and pick up. So this is going to be a quick beginner's guide of this MacBook. You should have a decent understanding. I actually just dropped my 14 inch tutorial. So 16 inch one, it's kind of the same thing, but there are some bigger differences, a much bigger display, much bigger battery, a kind of more performance, not really, depending on which model you spec out, but this is the top of the top. So lucky you, I'm really happy for you. Now let's go and look at the body of this MacBook. So up top, this is the top of your MacBook. The Apple logo, if you want to open it, is looking away from you, which is very weird, but you have the flap at the bottom, which allows you to easily open it and close it, which is really cool. Now let's go and cover the ports. There's no Apple logo that glows, but it's still very premium. So on this side of the MacBook, on the right side, we actually have the MagSafe charging port, which is beautiful. I'm surprised they didn't put USB Type-C to USB Type-C, but this is still perfectly fine. We do have a USB Type-C port right here, two of them, and a headphone jack. So these ports are great. These two USB Type-C ports are great for adding displays, but you can also charge via these displays, as these ports as well. So if you only want to do it via MagSafe, you can do it here. But I prefer these ports to be honest, but, but this is great too. It comes in the box, which is cool. Then the headphone jack on the right side. We do have one part of the fan right here, which helps with cooling down the device. Now on the other side of the MacBook, we have an SD card slot, which is amazing. So if you want to, you know, add photos from your camera or something like that, you can plug it in here, which is beautiful. We have a USB type C port, another one. So the same functionality within this one, charging, display out, connecting dongles, GPUs or whatever. You can go ahead and do the same thing here as you can on the other one. So it's cool we have it on both sides. And we have an HDMI port as well, which is great for plugging into TVs, monitors, different things like that. And then we have another portion of the fan right here. And on the back, we don't have anything except for the fan intake, which is really cool. So one little trick, I would recommend not covering these things up. You know, if you're putting them in your bed and you're kind of like having blankets over it, I'd probably recommend not doing it. These MacBooks are great for, you know, cooling and everything I've heard, but you don't want to cover these fans in the back. On the back of the MacBook, we have our MacBook Pro logo, which is ingrained, which is cool. You will never really have to do anything on the back of this MacBook, so keep that in mind. But it's still pretty cool that we have this capability. I mean, it looks so beautiful on the back too. The feet of these, you probably want to clean up every once in a while. But that pretty much covers it up on the outside of this MacBook. Now, like I mentioned, if you want to actually open up your MacBook, we have the flap at the bottom. So we can go ahead and just open it up like this. You want, kind of want to be careful. You don't want to break your MacBook by doing it. And then you will see the display up here, which we'll get into in a second, and the keyboard and the magic trackpad. We have the speaker set right here, massive speakers. We have no more touch bar. So now it's been, you know, replaced with these standard keys, which is beautiful. Now I will go in more, a little bit more in detail with these. So I can't cover every single little thing like copying and pasting and screenshotting and all that stuff with these but i will leave a link in the description which is going to be i think from apple with all these different keyboard shortcuts and trackpad shortcuts as well so instead of boring you guys for 50 minutes i will leave that in the description i would recommend looking through those because that's a pretty crazy list the keyboard here is perfect like i mentioned no more touch bar so we do have our standard function keys here so we have the escape key so you can escape or go back into it like this if you can we have the ability of increasing and decreasing our ball our brightness getting into our app selection here volume up and down touch ID all the way at the end, which is beautiful. I love having touch ID. And the standard keys here are the same, which is cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we do have a newer microphone in here, even newer than the M1 MacBook Pros, which that one was pretty good. So I am curious to see how this one holds up. On top of that, the magic trackpad here. Now, this is a force touch trackpad. So there is no actual button. So things like moving around, you have to actually click in it. If you want to right click, it's two buttons. If you want to get into that app, you know, full page, which I'll show in a second, you go like this on your trackpad, which is pretty funny. Like I mentioned, all the shortcuts and everything that I'm going to talk about in this video will also be linked down below. So, you know, I'd recommend looking at that. Caps lock key here, and everything is pretty much the same as before. I'm sure most of you have used a MacBook or laptop before, so it's pretty much the same layout. Now let's go and look at the display. So pretty much the remainder of this whole entire video will be played on this specific display, so keep that in mind. But up top, we have the notch, which is beautiful. So they put the display up all the way to the corners, which I think looks really, really cool. We have the standard menu bar right here. We have the dock always persistent at the bottom. And we now have a 120 hertz pro motion display, which is easily one of the best features of this MacBook. And that is pretty much it. You know, that is pretty much the whole entire MacBook on the outside. There's no touch screen. There's nothing super crazy to understand. So now we can kind of delve deep into the software, but I do want to keep you guys in mind that if you've used any MacBook before, things like M1 MacBook, any Intel MacBook from the last like 10 years, it's almost the same exact setup, which is great. Not much has changed. The body is the only big difference. Other than that, the software is pretty much going to be exactly the same. So up top, we have the menu bar. So the notch does cut into the menu bar, but it's not really that big of a deal. 
because it was going to be cut off anyway. It's just like extra space. And Apple does a good job at kind of hiding the notch in full screen applications, which we'll get into in a second. So starting off with the menu bar up here, we have our Apple logo. This will pretty much always be here. This will not change per application, I don't think. And within this Apple logo, you can access things like about this Mac, system preferences, app store, sleep, shut down your Mac, log out a user or whatever, and so many different options here. Now you can see right here, it says Finder, right? But we really don't even have Finder open. Our desktop is technically the Finder app, which is kind of funny. So if we click here, you can go ahead and access so many different things within each individual application. So everything from Finder onwards will change per application you're in. So if we go into Finder, you'll see it says Finder. If we go and click on Safari, you'll see that it now changes to Safari and it'll change all of these options to the Safari browser. So there's no point in going through every single individual setting because it's different per you know application. So just kind of understand that the main thing you always want to tinker around with, and if there's any apps you want to you know specifically change app you know settings for, you want to make sure you have that application open. So calendar, and you want to go ahead and go through each of these preferences and files and kind of go through which specific apps you use and kind of familiarize yourself with all the other options that are within here. You can create new events and different things like that. There's so many core keyboard shortcuts per application, so I'd recommend looking into that too. But again, everything these two kind of, so the Apple logo stays there. And this is one of the more important areas you wanna look at, to figure out which application you're in, and these will change per application. Now we have the menu bar here. It is kind of strange because the mouse goes behind it. And there's been times where people actually have, you know, added status bar icons that cut into here. So you kind of wanna be a little careful of that. I'll go ahead and exit out of all these applications. And now on the other side of our menu bar, we have our battery icon, which is great. We can see how much battery health and life we have left on our MacBook. Within the Wi-Fi option, you can go and connect to other Wi-Fi networks and all that good stuff, which is really cool. Now Spotlight Search is something that's really impressive. Now you can access Spotlight Search by clicking on the command bar or command icon and space bar at the same time, or you can just click on the search bar up here. And when I tell you, you can search for anything on your MacBook, things like you know notes, messages, applications, files you've downloaded, you can search for anything here. So if you are ever confused about where you put something or what application can do what, you can type it in and find it. So if I ever wanted to look up like Safari, for example, which is our you know web browser, I didn't even write it right, right? But you can see that there's so many other things that come up. So it'll show you suggested things and all these other things. You can search the web. You can look up these things for series suggested websites. But if I type it in right, I didn't even write it right, which is so funny. Even before I fully type it in, you can see so many other things that come up. Things like the Safari browser, which I actually want to open. So I can click here and I can open up the application here too, instead of searching around for it everywhere. Now, right next to that, we have our control center. So this is great. We can add our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection settings here, AirDrop, our focus mode, which is new with macOS Monterey. So we no longer have do not disturb. It's pretty much just focus mode, which is cool. And we also have our display and sound toggles we can go and modify as well. So we can increase and decrease our brightness right here. We can also increase and decrease our sound here. But one thing I like doing, and I'd probably recommend you to do too, is to grab this display toggle here and bring it up to your menu bar. So you can see I just grabbed it and dropped it off the menu bar. And I can do the same exact thing with the sound bar and bring it up right here too. So why do this? Well, it makes it much easier to control your display brightness and your sound at the same time. So if I click here, I can go and decrease and increase the you know, display brightness here. I can decrease the sound here too, instead of clicking on this toggle and then doing it. It makes it a little bit easier and I actually do prefer this a lot. Now you can also see the music that you're having here. You can hop out of it here. Now another big thing is under this you know, notification center. So where is the notification center? Well, you pretty much click on the you know date and time right there and it will bring you here. So it'll have a whole bunch of different widgets you can use, which will look beautiful on the 16 inch display. But a big thing to keep in mind is that notifications will also live here. So if you get any type of notification, things like you know text messages, phone calls, missed phone calls, missed messages, you ejecting a SIM SD card, which happens to me all the time, you will get those notifications right there. So if you ever feel like you missed something or you miss a notification or something and you just kind of want to see how your MacBook's doing, you can actually just click here and kind of see if there's no messages and you're probably good. But if there's a ton of things, you probably want to look into it to be honest. You can also edit these widgets down here. You can hop out. And that pretty much covers up the menu bar, which is probably the most important thing with anything, any application. These things change, so it's really good to kind of familiarize with yourself with the menu bar. Then we have the desktop. So if you ever want to bring anything to the desktop, you can always, you know, modify it. You can create a new folder by right clicking and clicking there. You can get info of the desktop, which is really cool. Sometimes you may want to put a lot of things here if you ever take a screenshot. So a quick way that I like taking screenshots is clicking command, shift and four. And you'll see this little icon actually change. And you can go ahead and, you know, hold down and take a screenshot of wherever you want. And you will see that it will go ahead and take a screenshot here. So I swipe out, 
So most of the time the screenshots will be saved on the desktop here. You can change this in the settings. But you know, whenever you go ahead and take images and download them, sometimes they'll be saved on this you know, desktop, which is really nice. Now at the bottom half, you will see that we have the dock down here. Now this is great because you can quickly toggle all your applications that you like. So I'm not gonna go through each of these apps because it's going to be different per you, but this is a brand new MacBook, so I didn't even modify this dock yet. So if I go ahead and you know, go through, we can quickly access Safari here. We can go and click on notes and whatever. But you may be asking yourself, what, what if I didn't want any of these applications? What if I didn't want Apple Music right here? Well, what you can do is you can hover over this app. You can right click on it, which is just clicking it down like this, like we mentioned before. You can click options and you can click remove from dock. So you can see that application is actually removed now. And you can do this with any application. But now let's say, hey, I removed the application. Now I want to add my own apps here. Well, there's a very easy way to do this. You want to access your specific application manager. So unfortunately, they actually took away the key shortcut, which allows you to do it. So instead, you want to go like this on your Magic Trackpad. So I hold on my MacBook. You want to go like this, which is very funny. So again, go like this on your trackpad, like you're just kind of like squeezing it. And you will get into this little portion. So what this is, is it basically shows you all the applications that you have installed on your MacBook. So I like it this way. But there's also another way to access it. You can click out of this in an empty spot. You can open up your Finder application, which holds all these little different things that we have on our MacBook, including that screenshot we just took. And you can click on the Applications toggle here. Now, if you don't see an Applications toggle, you can click on Go. Like we mentioned before, these change per application. So familiarize yourself with these little toggles per app. And you can go and click on the Application toggle, which is right here, and it'll take you to the same spot. So now what we can do is we can drag an application that we actually wanted. So let's say we actually did like Apple Music down there. Well, we can hold down on one side and drag it down and drag it to our dock. And you can house all sorts of different things. I think you can even put different files. So if I take the screenshot, I can probably go down here. So I guess I can't. But you can store any applications that you want from here. But also you can do the same thing with the tab bar here. You can bring in an application here, bring it to your dock, and then you can port it here too, which is really, really cool. So this can be customized. The menu bar can't really be customized except for the status bar icons, but I'd recommend, you know, deleting any applications or removing them from your dock here, and then pretty much, you know, seeing which ones you like and then going from there. Now, another thing I want to showcase to you is actually these specific applications. So up, to, up on the top left, like we mentioned, the menu bar typically changes per app. One thing that doesn't change is this little portion right here. Most apps will have a exit button, a minimize button, and a full screen button. So if we go and click the exit button, the application will go and exit and you won't have to deal with it anymore. But if we open up that application again, you, if you ever wanted to hide that app, so you just didn't want up in your space, but you want to hide it, you can go and click that you know, minimize button and that application will go ahead and be minimized. So you won't even see that application anymore, but you'll still be able to access it by opening it up and it'll come straight to where it was before. So that's a great thing if you ever want to hide apps. I'm sure most of you have you know, minimized apps before, but this last one is actually full screen mode. So now we can actually enter full screen mode. We can tilt it over to our left side of the screen or right side of the screen. But in this case, we'll just go and click on it and you'll see it'll full screen that application. So this is great if you want to focus in on an app, but two things happened. The app actually went ahead and actually opened up so it's full screen, but also it hid the menu bar in the notch. So if you just want to focus in on one thing at the time, you can just you know full screen it and focus in on it. Now, if you want to exit out, there's two different things. You can click the escape button on your keyboard, which is right here, but you can also go ahead and go up top and you will see that the menu bar is still there. It's just kind of behind the notch. If you go away from it, you'll see it actually disappears. So what you can do is you can just click on the un full screen button right there and it will go ahead and disable full screen. And this is pretty much on every single application. So whatever app you're in, you can full screen it, minimize it, exit out. Those things stay persistent. The application changes, but those things stay persistent. So let's go and click on the exit button and it just goes away. Now let's go back to our top left Apple logo. This is a very, very important area. So we wanna click here. Now there's two things I wanna show you here. There's system preferences and about this Mac. Now the other things are kind of self-explanatory. So when we click about this Mac, we're going to see this little thing come up at the center. Now this is very important. If you're ever planning on reselling your MacBook or if you're not too sure which MacBook you have or whatever the case is, and you're looking at specific tutorials online on how to fix your MacBook, you wanna look at this specific area and figure out which MacBook you have. So you can see I have the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2021 model. You also see the M1 Pro chipset, 16 gigs of RAM, and the serial number. It doesn't really matter for me because I'm a public personality or whatever, but for you specifically, if anybody access or asks for your serial number and they are not Apple support, do not give them to them unless you trust them or whatever. 
the only people who should be accessing this is somebody either that you know personally or Apple support if they ask for it. Now, that's not even crazy important to be honest. If you click under storage, you'll see how much storage you have left. Support, if you ever wanna contact Apple, you have a couple different options here. But going back to overview, you'll see this software update panel. Now, I would highly recommend you as soon as you buy any of the new MacBooks to update your software. Most of the time, especially now if you're buying a brand new MacBook, you want this thing to be updated with software because most of the time if you buy it, it's already going to be outdated because you have to go and update the software. So to be on the most stable version of software, you want to go and update your MacBook, and this is where you can do it. You're probably going to be spending a lot of time updating your MacBook, to be honest, and there's already an update about it, and I just got it yesterday. So exiting out of here and exiting out of here, the last thing we're going to look at is actually under system preferences. So system preferences are pretty much your system settings all across the board. So if I go and click the back button, you will see that I pretty much have not only the ability of signing into my iCloud account, which I haven't done yet, but all these different settings and options. Now, I will highly recommend you to go through each one of these settings and understand what every single one of these settings do. They're completely self-explanatory. You know, Siri, Spotlight Search, Notification Center, Security and Privacy. If there's ever anything you need help with, I would recommend going through and finding the specific thing that you actually want to go and access. So let's say, hey, my Bluetooth isn't working. Well, you can go and click on Bluetooth right here, and you can find what Bluetooth devices you have available and connect to them and turn off Bluetooth and turn it on, which you can also do in the control center up top. You can click back right here. And again, this thing is self-explanatory. I'd recommend you to kind of you know familiarize yourself here. But this general option is one area that I spent a lot of time on. So here you can turn on dark mode. You can turn on light mode if you want to, which is really cool. There's a lot of other options here changing your default web browser. So again, I'd recommend looking through here and changing these peripherals as you will. We can go and click the back button. Desktop and screensaver, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. Dock and menu bar, if you wanna change the way your dock is set up, you can go and change the size of your dock like this. If you want it bigger, you can make it smaller. If you want to have it, you know, so many other settings, I mean, it just doesn't end really. So we can go and click the back button here. And like I mentioned, you're going to be spending a lot of time here. One area or two other areas that I spend a lot more time on, besides security and privacy in general, is actually under displays. So if we click on display, you will actually see that our MacBook now has a new toggle down here. You can change the brightness and change the orientation and all that good stuff. But you can also click on the promotion side here and you will see that we now have the new 120 Hertz promotion ability. And like I mentioned, this is a really cool feature. It's one of the biggest features of this new MacBook, so I'm really happy that it's still here. And you can go and turn it off if you want to by clicking 60 hertz, but I'd recommend you stay on ProMotion. Now clicking back, we can go under battery. Now this is a really cool feature within our new MacBooks. So you can see that we now have our battery level here, so you can see your usage level and all that good stuff, which is really cool. If we click on battery, you'll see a couple of different things pop up. So you'll see optimized battery charging, change your display off, you can change your display turnoff ratio and all this other stuff, which is really cool. And like I mentioned, I'm a huge fan of that. And you can just change so many different things here, it's not even funny. So this is another area you're probably going to spend a lot of time with. Like I mentioned, I typically just kind of change it one time and let it be. But like we mentioned up top, you can always change all these other options here within all these other panels as well. So we can click back and we can go and click the exit button. And that's really pretty much the main things you need to know about your 16 inch MacBook. Now there's things like turning on, you know, extra power mode and different things like that. But if you need extra help, I have a lot of videos on my second channel, which I will also leave linked down below that break down pretty much way more than I even broke down in this video. I'm talking years and years of just MacBook tutorials. So if you need help with that, check out that link in the description. You can get a little bit more help there as well. So. By now, you should have a good understanding of your new 16-inch MacBook, and hopefully you learned a lot about it because I'm definitely tired of talking. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.